Hello and welcome to the Manifest to Live Life Golden Show. This is episode 92. We are taking on cheating today, betrayals, and all of the wounds that you may have experienced in this life with dealing with relationships and people. So you may be wondering, you know, how I can speak to this. I uh, have been in a really solid relationship for about 37 years, and no, we have never cheated on one another, which is, I know, it's amazing. And because of that, I can speak to it, because I can tell you what really creates strong, long-lasting relationships, and I'm going to do that at the end. But for now, we're going to deal with cheating, whether you've been cheated on recently, whether you were cheated on years ago. There are things that happen when we have these situations, when we put our trust in someone and they betray us. They cheat on us. They do something that really rocks our foundation of trust. And that's what betrayal is. It's basically taking our confidence in someone, our trust in someone, and it's completely dismantling it. So there's a couple of things that happen when you deal with situations like this. One is you lose trust in yourself. You start to feel like you didn't know better. You should have known better. You should have seen the signs. You know, you start to feel like you can't trust your own guidance. And that's a problem. I'm going to help you figure out how to get back to the trust of yourself and the trust of your own inner guidance. One of the things that really rocks our inner guidance is when we do live life from wounds when we don't take the time to heal, when we don't take the time to journal and really get to know ourselves, we can create cycles over and over again that feel out of our control. We start to feel powerless from it. We start to feel unworthy of true love. We start to feel like, you know, everyone's out to get us or everyone's out to betray us. And then we stop trusting people. We stop trusting ourselves. What that does is it sets you up with a vibrational energy that is going to consistently attract those you cannot trust and those who will do you dirty. So you've really got to work on yourself. This all comes from within. This all comes from you. And I know it's hard. It's hard to get back into relationships after we've been hurt. But understand this, everything that's happening to you in your life, is an, it's an experience and an invitation that calls you to heal. So, you know, especially for those of you who have been in long marriages and, and there was a huge betrayal that actually created a complete dismantling of your entire life. Your entire world fell apart and everything that you believed was going to happen or was happening was an untruth. When that happens, so many things become unraveled within you and normally they come from very old wounds. You know, we often will see cycles of these things. And when cycles are created, you know that you have wounds that continue to vibrate with these energies that bring them into your life. So the first thing you have to do is get honest. You got to get really honest about the way you feel. You've got to get really in tune with getting to know yourself better and to stop allowing people on the outside to conduct what you're doing. You've got to go within and start asking the questions, really dig down and start journaling. Like, what is my deepest fear? Where does this fear come from? Why do I keep attracting people that, you know, I cannot trust? Why do I often feel like my relationships are not enough and I have to chase people? Why do I always feel like I have to chase people? Or why do I always get in relationships where I feel like I need to check up on the person? Um, I've had several clients that have been in situations like this and actually a friend of a friend recently who brought this to my attention. And it's when you're in a relationship and you're looking at the person's phone, you're checking up on them to make sure that they're not cheating on you. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a really, really dangerous path. If you are doing this, I'm going to implore you to stop because you are going to find something. If you believe you're going to find something, I mean, basically the act of looking at someone's phone there is a belief underneath it that you're absolutely going to find something. So whether you're, you know, you've been suspicious or not, 
the greatest thing that you can do in situations like this when you're feeling like that person may not be being honest with you is to have some open-hearted communication. I know it's hard to be vulnerable. One of the greatest things that my husband and I have done is we are vulnerable with each other. We tell each other how we feel. We heal together. You know, we work on our wounds together and it hasn't always been pretty. It's been, it's been pretty, um, you know, it's been a process for sure. You know, there was screaming, there was fighting, there were letters written, there were all of those things over the course of our relationship. And now that we're at this point in our relationship where we really do trust each other, like with every fiber, I never look at his phone. He never looks at my phone. There is no reason for us to do that. So if you feel you have a reason to, you know, check up on someone and to make sure they they're doing what they say they should be doing. There are, you know, there's, there's issues in the relationship that you've really got to start looking at and issues within yourself where you may be choosing partners that aren't exactly giving you what you need. It always comes from you. So if you are feeling like someone is giving to other people and not to you, you have to look at what that is inside of you that is causing those feelings. Because if we are chasing, people are going to run away. So if we're really connecting and we're really um, creating deep relationships, it's letting go of these deep underlying feelings and beliefs. So you have to get in touch with your beliefs. And this has to do with friendships too. You know, if you've had a lot of friendships with betrayal, if you just have a lot of people in your life who you feel like have betrayed you and you no longer feel like you can trust anyone, that is an issue. That is going to cause a lot of social problems in your life. So I would really dig down to those belief systems. When was the first time I felt this way? What do I really believe about the opposite sex? You know, do I, I mean, I hear women say this all the time. Men cannot be trusted. Is that what you believe? You know, men, are you saying women cannot be trusted? Um, You know, any, any situation that you're in always has a belief system underneath it. So if that's what you believe, then you're going to continue to attract partners that you cannot trust or believe. So you got to get to the bottom of those. You do that by journaling. You do that by looking straight head on. Where did this start? You know, did my mother cheat on my father? Did my father cheat on my mother? Did this set me up with a belief system that is inept? It's absolutely creating a vibration that is causing me to attract this in my life. So you got to get to the bottom of that and do some really, you know, hard lined, get real with yourself. What am I really feeling? What did this situation bring up for me? You know, I know a lot, mostly women. I know a lot of women that have gone through and had marriages, you know, fall apart because the man was cheating. And one of the things, you know, I don't want you to beat yourself up. First of all, you know, we have to acknowledge what's ours but not in a way that causes us to be really critical of ourselves and to feel worse because that does not help. The best way to go about that is to get real about what do I really believe about myself? Do I believe I'm lovable? Do I believe, have I been trustworthy? You know, have I had integrity with my word or have I been a little bit of a, a liar and not being real about my feelings with my partner? You know, take responsibility for what was yours and what was created in the communication by you not being totally honest with yourself or your partner. That's what I mean about acknowledging your responsibility in it, but not saying that it's your fault because it's not your fault necessarily, but you have to take enough responsibility so you don't recreate it again. All men are not untrustworthy. All women are not untrustworthy. We are all in this life experience together to invite each other to heal, to you know, move and process and become more and expand and grow through the life we are living. If you continue to create relationships that cause you to feel these powerless, unworthy feelings, that needs to begin with you. You have to go within. And I'm going to say it like I say it every time meditation, quieting your mind, getting to know yourself. My new book is out, Mindful Manifestation Secrets. Daily Guide and Journal will really help you to get real about the different subjects in your life, to journal them out. I ask you all the questions, all the questions that will help you to really go within 
and work on your healing game so that you don't do this anymore. You don't attract this anymore and you can start to trust again. So the biggest thing that these, the feelings that you may start to feel when you have a situation, when something has happened, or even if this is an old situation, the feelings that you may have is distrust of others, like not trusting anyone, being fearful that someone's going to hurt you. That's basically what distrust is, is being fearful that someone is going to do something that's going to hurt you. Uh, no longer believing in love, distrust of yourself. So you beat yourself up, you feel worthless, you feel powerless. You know, the feelings that you get from being cheated on are like, you need to self protect, you know, that you that you didn't do enough to protect yourself, you know, that you shouldn't have done this. The thing about broken hearts and betrayals is they really open us up. You know, if we don't like shut down and hide, when you shut down your heart and you no longer communicate with people and you really make your life super small, you don't really learn from the, from the scope of the huge human experience. Relationships are really what help us to expand and grow. When you dive deep into them, when you start to understand more about yourself, when you start to accept more of this human condition, which is that you know, everyone is doing the best they can. And it's not always great. You know, what people do is not always great. You know, people are not people are people. We used to say this all the time in network marketing. People are people. They've got their wounds. They've got their issues. They've got their low self-confidence. They've got their low self-esteem. Uh, we've got egos. You know, we were dealing with these egos and we don't really know, you know, what is going to make us feel that energy of of wanting to get our egos stroked you know that happens where people are feeling like they need to be praised feeling like they need attention and this is one of the biggest things that i have seen in relationships when they fall apart is that each partner is not getting what they need from each other and because of that they tend to shut down they tend to close their hearts and go in different directions and before they know it they're like roommates right they're not really connecting especially now today with social media and every, you know, we've got two people working in the households, we've got kids to raise, there's a lot going on. It's really easy for us to not pay attention to the most important relationship in your life, which is your love relationship. You know, it's the relationship of being with a partner, of being best friends, of creating a really rich and intimate life together uh, is, I mean, they say it's like 95% of your happiness. So if you don't have that and you want that, you've got to work on this inner story. you got to work on the inner beliefs that are creating you pushing people away. If you don't trust, if you feel like everyone's a cheater, if you, if you feel like everyone's going to betray you and they're always out to get you, that is why you're creating it. If you feel left out all the time, that is why, because you feel that way. You know, everything is subject to a story, right? I did a podcast episode on change your story, change your life. Everything is subject to a story, which means everything that happens to you is subject to the meaning that you give to it. The meaning that you give to it is what creates the next moment. So if somebody does something and it looks like they're leaving you out, you have a choice to A, not take it personally, or B, take it personally and feel left out. The more you feel left out, the more you're going to create reasons to feel left out. The more you feel distrust, the more you're going to create reasons to feel distrust. And I know this is probably one of the biggest challenges in universal law, law of attraction, is recognizing your part in it. It's no longer being a victim. And it's saying, all right, listen, I have created these freaking cycles in my life, and I'm done with them. How do you be done with them? You connect with yourself, you get real with yourself, you look at these beliefs. And then you start looking in your outside world at the energy that's being reflected to you. And you start making decisions there. And you need a meditation, quiet your mind practice to create enough space to create the awareness to go, okay, this happened. How do I want to feel about it? What does this say about me? What do I need this to say about me? What do I want this to say about me? Do I want more of this? That is like one of my favorite things to say to get me out of the addiction to emotions. So we have addictions to emotions because 
emotions download chemical hormones in our body. Adrenaline, right? Stress, drama. Drama a lot of times makes us feel like we matter, right? When we have a lot of dramatic things. And I know the drama doesn't feel good, but there is a part of us, deep down part of us, that knows that when we have drama in our life, we get attention, right? When we cried, when we have temper tantrums, we got attention from our parents. This is where this comes from. So we have to work on healing those little girl and boy wounds. I call them playground wounds. So many of us were betrayed as children. So many of us were left out on the playground. So we have to deal with those foundational beliefs and energies to heal them. So going on, um, okay, let's see. I went through that. Be honest. Okay, let's see where we're at. I've got a lot of notes and I want to get through this super fast today so I can stay within my shorter time frame in these shows. Okay. Uh, okay, so get in touch with every feeling that this brings up to you and journal the hell out of it. Write it all out. As angry as you want to be, write it all out really dump it out, get it out. Okay. And once you get these feelings out moving forward, it's interrupting the thoughts and the energies that continue the cycles. So if you journal it all out and you get out this feeling of, you know, betrayal and distrust and, you know, this person cheated on me and I'm really angry about it. If this is a fresh situation, this is going to take a little time. It's not like I don't have a magic pill for you. I wish I did. But if, you, if you've if you got years of this stuff where you've been holding on to this stuff and dragging it into every relationship you have now, it's time. It's time to start really parting ways with it because it's not serving you. It is not serving you and it is not allowing you to heal and expand and grow into a new level where you can start creating deeper loving, joyful relationships where you don't have this issue anymore. You don't have to worry about this anymore. You never really did have to worry about it. It's just, I think that one of the biggest issues is that when, if we could get honest about the relationships, right? I think what happens is we get into relationships, we get really excited about them. And I I am so, um, I hate the word guilty, but I am deaf. This has definitely happened to me several times and I'm a little more neutral about things now because I know that overexcitement will often burn me, you know, getting overexcited about new friends. Oh, I made a new friend and I just love them and I adore them or partners. That That's one of the biggest, um, I'm not going to call it a betrayal with partners, but I would say the biggest disappointments in my life have been when I've partnered with people and they have let me down. And it, it comes on the heels of, you know, me this is, this is me journaling, getting really deep with what these wounds were, was that I always believed I needed someone to do this with. I always believed I needed a partner to go into business with to really become a success. And it's untrue. And up until even a month ago, I was clearing out this belief. And recently, I've had a relationship that I thought was going to turn into a business partnership that didn't. And it really helps me to heal it. It really helps me to heal this where I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't need no one. I can do this on my own. I got what I need. I know what I'm doing and I just have to move forward. So look at those things. Look at those, those situations that have caused massive disappointments. Massive disappointments in our life create wounds and going within and looking at those wounds and journaling through them and really acknowledging your feelings will help move them. There is a philosophy in law of attraction that says, you know, just be happy, just focus on happy things, just focus on joy. And I agree with that. But if you have underlying vibrations that continually bring you down, that continually bring you into these lower vibrational energies, not dealing with them is not helpful because you will constantly be hit over the head with invitations to heal them. So it's important to acknowledge what do I have going on inside of me? It's also important to look at your relationships, new ones, old ones, whatever, and really get real with yourself, okay? So like, what am I looking to get from this person? What do, what do I need in a relationship? Just being really honest, you know? And if you're not getting what you're needing from a relationship and you're feeling desperate and you're feeling like you're chasing the person, 
just let go. Just, just give it some space because when we chase people run, understand that when we chase people run, energy is in the field and everyone can feel it. So create a strong, healthy relationship with yourself and then, and then create friendships and create um, significant relationships with those partners that you really want to be with because you've got to work on yourself. Uh, my daughter recently, uh, so she's been through some tough relationships and she has a baby with someone she's no longer in a relationship with because my baby is five. My grandbaby is five. But she has learned so much and she has taken this last two, three years to really heal herself and to kind of have a high, she's kind of had a high standard for herself. And she kind of has like a, like a zero tolerance for stuff, right? Like she just, she knows what she wants. She's clarifying all the time. And she is now in a new relationship that is really indicating the reflection of who she is and the work she's done and how much she's healed. And it's beautiful. And I could cry just, just talking about it because I'm so happy. So it's possible. It's possible no matter how crappy your relationships have been before, no matter how awful you have allowed someone to te treat you, you can now step into a new place where you have self-worth, you have self-love, you've done the healing work, but you've got to get real and do the journaling, do the meditating, get determined to really set yourself on a path of growth, of expansion, of really understanding who you are and what you want. So there was a question in a group recently, and it was this, um, I think it was a woman, and she was asking, like, why does she keep attracting these men that are not who she is, right? And I, and I would question that because there's layers, right? There's layers of who we are. And, and whenever we attract someone, sometimes attracting that person is about our healing and it is about clarification. So if you're getting in a bunch of relationships and they keep showing you different things, that's great. That's great. First, it's great that you're getting yourself out there. Next, it's great that you are allowing yourself to to really process and grow through the process of finding your perfect person, you know, finding that special someone that can become your best friend. The other thing I would say, if that's where you're at right now, dating and, and finding a new partner or even finding new friendships is take it slow. Don't be overexcited. Don't put too much on this person in the beginning and really forage strong friendships and relationships before you, you know, go, go off the deep end. And before you get yourself so far into it that you can't see, you know, you can't see because you've got your blinders on because this has to be the one and this has to be everything I've ever wanted. Nothing has to be that way. It will be created that way when you pay attention to what's going on within. So if you look at your old relationships and you know, you get real with yourself, you're going to see how the potential you have for romanticizing, especially if you have a relationship that ended, get real. Okay. I want you to get real. I used to do this with my family, my biological family all the time, and I would romanticize and it was never like that. Right. So when we romanticize, then we feel sad and we miss the person. But if we got real about it and we stopped romanticizing, if we got real about it and we really connected with the truth of the relationship, we would see where it went wrong. We would see where we ignored our own guidance and we allowed these things to happen. It is always, we're giving permission. We are always giving permission for someone to take us and betray us. We're always doing that. We're allowing our boundaries to get put down. We're allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. And I'm not saying being vulnerable is bad. What I am saying is, just pay attention to what you're allowing, what you're allowing, what you're tolerating. Because if you're tolerating a bunch of bullshit, that says a lot about you. That says a lot about how much you love yourself and how much you think you are worthy of. So get connected with that. So do your journaling work. Get my new book. I'm telling you on Amazon. It is a journal, but it has also got a ton of information and a daily guide to help you to really assist you in just becoming a really strong, powerful creator every single day. I'm telling you guys, the determination we need to have to override this freaking monkey mind and all of the wounds that we've had before is 
it's, we have to be powerful. We've got to be strong about it. And we've got to have a really solid disposition every single day to do the things that make us feel really good. If we don't, and we just allow ourselves to kind of be subject to our mind, we're going to live in anxiety. We're going to live in neural pathways and loops that take us back to wounds. You know, we're going to be living in this default mode of life where we are not deliberately creating the life we want to live. So this book, Mindful Manifestation Secrets Daily Guide and Journal, I know it's a big title, is on um, Amazon. Also Mindful Manifestation Secrets, which is my first book, which will teach you the foundations of manifesting and how to really live your dreams. That one is also on Amazon. Um, I also have Quantum Speak for Parents, which is also on Amazon. If you are in a parenting situation and you want to create really strong and loving relationships with your children. Um, on that note, I will say anytime we are in a relationship with someone and we start attacking them, right? Like we start accusing or attacking these two a words. Keep these keep these like close to your mind. Accusing and attacking. Whenever we are accusing and attacking, uh, we are creating an energy field that will not allow for solutions. Those are two problem energies that will not allow for solutions. And what they'll do is they'll create a lot of drama in your life, and they will put a person on the defense. I've seen this in every one of my relationships. And people who are not ready to acknowledge something in their life will feel attacked when you try to make them responsible. So the greatest thing we can do to communicate, to create strong relationships is come to a place where we share how we feel. You know, I'm not feeling good. I think, you know, I know I have some healing work to do. This is the way I've been feeling. I just feel like my foundation is a little rocky and I'm feeling insecure and I've got to figure this out and I want to figure this out with you. You know, when you come at it that way and you have compassion for people, you know, one of the, the greatest shifts in my relationship with my husband was when I started telling him I trusted him. Instead of arguing, instead of trying to get my way all the time, I started to really listen to him and I started to listen to his guidance and his advice and his intuition because his intuition is spot on. And if you don't have a husband that you believe their intuition is spot on, you've got to work on that because if you're constantly undermining your partner, that is going to cause a breakdown in the relationship. But if instead you look at one another and you're like, I trust you, I trust your feelings, I trust your intuitions that's when the relationship can really bond and become stronger. Now, you can't say it if you don't believe it. That is true. So you've got to work on believing that more. You've got to work together on really forging a stronger relationship where you communicate and it's effective. Effective communication is always about sharing how we feel and not accusing, not accusing, not attacking, but saying, what can we do about this? I used to do this with my kids all the time when like one example was when we'd be late for the bus and like I'd wake up every day and I'd be stressed and I'd be rushing them. And, I'd, and I'm like, I don't want to feel this anxiety anymore. So I would sit them down and I would say, hey, what can we do about this? What would make this better for both of us? What would help you? What would help me? It feels more like teamwork instead of being, you know, dominating, instead of being like, you know, the, uh, the, the Hitler and the family where you got to like bark out orders and everybody's got to listen to me. That's no fun. You want to create beautiful, loving, lasting relationships. You've got to come together. You've got to be vulnerable. You got to open up your heart. If you're shutting your heart down, the chances of your relationship falling apart are really good. If you open up your heart and say, you know, I've been through this before and it sucked for me and I have to figure out how to overcome this and I want to figure out how to overcome this with you, that's a different conversation than, you know, I found this stuff in your phone. It's a totally different conversation. So if your relationship has ended, it is what it is. We got to heal. We got to get over it. We got to move forward. And we got to take what happened in that relationship and really look at it and really look at what it means for us, really look at what we want it to mean for us, and really look at how we can do it 
better moving forward, more whole. You know, so many of us are living from wounds, like five-year-old wounds. All of our beliefs are created by the time we're five and seven. So you can look back at that childhood and figure out why you operate the way you do and start to heal those things so you're no longer acting like a five-year-old, honestly. So look at those wounds. You know, if you've had parents, if you've had marriages, parental marriages that have broken up because of cheating, if you've had a lot of, you know, boyfriends, girlfriends cheating on you, there's a cycle there, baby, and it all begins with you. It all begins with your foundation. So journal that puppy out, you know, find out what those foundational feelings are, and then Moving forward, when you get into new relationships, be real open, be real honest, be real honest with yourself, be real honest with the person about your insecurities, allow yourself to be vulnerable. So many of us are walking around afraid of getting hurt, you know, and and what that does is being afraid of getting hurt, it pretty much ensures that we're going to be hurt because we're vibrating with fear. You know, this whole thing about being afraid of getting sick, we're vibrating with that. You know, that's why I had a hard time uh, putting a mask over my face because I'm like, I'm not acting as if I'm sick. That's ridiculous. I am healthy. I am strong. I am powerful. I am afraid of nothing. Uh, and, And part of that is this spiritual piece of this. And the spiritual piece of this says, I trust what's coming to me. I trust what's happening is part of my expansion and growth here and my process in becoming more. So opening up your heart. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I'm, I'm never going to have a pet again because my, my heart was so broken when my pet passed away. And I'm like, the best thing you could do is get another pet. You have more love to give. Open up your heart and stop shutting it down. We are here to live. We are here to love We are here to experience life to the absolute fullest. And if you're not doing that, I'm going to beg you to start because you never know. You never know how your life may radically change one day. So you might as well live it to the fullest now. You might as well get the greatest experience here. Love the deepest. Love the fullest. Open up your heart. Be vulnerable, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There is no reason to be afraid. All of the things that are happening to you are reflecting. They're reflecting what's really going on deep inside. So they're a favor, baby. That breakup, that cheating, it's all doing you a favor. As soon as you acknowledge your peace in it and your power over it, you have to acknowledge your peace in it and then you then you can acknowledge your power over it. And you can decide, you know what? My next relationship is going to be very different. I am clear about what I want. I am clear about what I need. I really feel like my daughter did this recently. I'm really clear about how I want to be treated. And I am not going to accept anything less. So, you know, write that down. Writing is the strongest form of focus. So if you're coming off of a a rough relationship, I want you to write down everything that that relationship has now called a desire in you to create. I want a loving man. I want a man I can trust. I want a loving woman. I want a woman I can trust. I want to feel whole with this person. I want to I want to create a wonderful life with this person. I want to create a deep and intimate and vulnerable connection with this person. I want to feel cared for. I want to feel supported. I want to feel like the love that I am. Do you believe that you are love? That's a big piece of this. Do you believe that you are loved? Do you believe that you deserve unconditional love? Do you believe that you are worthy of it? You know, these are good questions. And the truth is, yes, (laughs) yes, you are worthy of it. You do absolutely um, deserve it. You do absolutely deserve it. No matter what's happened in your life, no matter where you've come from or what you've experienced, You are an expression of infinite intelligence and wisdom that is pure and unconditional love. And yes, you deserve all of it. You deserve it. And it's time for you to start living it. I am super excited for you. This conversation came 
and I had to I had to take it. I have never done a show on cheating or betrayal and I've had my own experiences with relationships just not working out and becoming big disappointments and I've taken the hits and I've healed from them. And I think one other thing that it's really made me do is you know, give people the benefit of the doubt and accept that everyone is doing the best they can. And everyone has their own wounds and their own issues and their own opportunities to heal. And when we can accept a little more and we can be a little more loving and we can stop making up stories, you know, making up stories about people and making things mean shitty things to us, that's when we're going to start winning. You know, when we can give people the benefit of the doubt and not, you know, play on their guilt or try to manipulate them or, you know, come from this place of always feeling like everybody's always shitting on us or leaving us out. When we can start to really heal from that, that's when our relationships will really start to become whole. And I'm sure that you have relationships in your life that have reflected this to you. If not right now, I'm sure in the past you've seen this love. And if you haven't, then it's time to start giving it to yourself. It's time to start finding it within so you can start beaming it out and start attracting it into your life because it's all up to you. It's all an invitation to heal and it's all an experience of expansion and growth. And I wish you the absolute greatest in your expansion and growth journey. All right, so I'm a little bit over. I was trying to stick to 30 minutes, but I'm still kind of proud of myself because I'm still way under an hour. Uh, The last thing I want to share with you is I've got this deep, intensive mind training coming up, and I've got a lot of content for you guys. Um, I actually asked some questions in my Manifest to Live Life Golden Facebook group. If you're not in there, get in there because I put posts up every day to help shift you and create new awarenesses for you. I'm also on TikTok now, so I'm doing little videos on there and Instagram, so you can follow me there. Um, Live Life Golden are both of my uh, handles there, but one of the things about this deep intensive mind training is I'm actually going to a seminar next weekend with Greg Braden and Bruce Lipton, and they are like crazy like neuroscientists, like quantum physics, like they get it at a whole new level. So I'm going to be bringing that information, that vibration back and that deep intensive mind training is going to happen right after that. So I'm still picking a date for it. Uh, You can find that on my social media, how to sign up. It's $77. It's going to be deep. It's going to be intense and it's going to help you to really heal and shift these things to become more to really get a handle on these neural pathways and loops that are in your mind, those 60,000 thoughts a day and start directing them, start directing them towards what you actually want to create. That's what a deep intensive mind training is, is it helps you to create awareness around those thoughts, feelings, and beliefs that are creating your entire world all around you. It's so freaking powerful and is my favorite thing to teach. So this will be a brand new teaching. If you've ever done a teaching with me, this is going to be different. So you want to sign up for this one. I may limit the people because I want to give some individualized attention to people. Um, I may limit to this to like 10 to maybe 15 Uh, So we can get a little chunk of what's going on and what you really need help with. There will be a writing prompt that will help you to get super deep. And there will be a guided meditation for you to keep that will be a separate recording. This will be recording. So if you can't be on the live, uh, you will get the recording after. All right, guys, that's my show for today. I did it. I love you all. Peace.